way I make my mugs are the clay that I load straight out of the bag is loaded into a hand extruder. This is one I got off of a, a Bailey Pottery or something like that. The tube's hollow. I cut my own die to go on the bottom. I uh, make it so it's double, and I just put a disc of plastic in there to decide which one I'm going to use. I'm using this one tonight. The length of handle that I want is exactly six inches. So there's no use extruding out something that's not in little over six inch increments or you'll have lots of waste. So I've labeled 12 inches on my table, and I will extrude out pieces that are just a hair over 12. That way I don't have tons of these little things left over that I have to squish and they dry out and it's inconsistent. So, I lay it here back here to 12, bring out 12, break it off, and then I just make, uh, it's really hot where I am today, so I'm probably only going to do about seven or eight of these, or it will, they'll dry, and then they'll look, they won't look good at all if they dry. These are the ones I just extruded, you just saw. Uh, you can see slight, tiny slight imperfection in them. But what I do is I will fix that when I get them on. There's nothing really bad in them. Little tiny things like that, the glaze will fill in. My glaze is kind of thick, so I can get away with that. See, there's a little over 12 inches long. Uh, that's the shape I picked. You can make them any size you want. Um, okay, it's laid out. I use a wire cutoff tool that allows me to go all the way to the wood. It does not stick any out here on the end, so I can make flush cuts with it. I whack it at 6 and at 12, and then I've just got this little bit to wedge up later. And I'll do a few of those. You can, lay, you can line them all up. And if your tool's wide enough, you can whack a bunch at one time. So there's six. Okay, the business begins. Uh, my tools are, I take old pieces of, this is my old sofa cushion. Take out a piece of sofa and I cut them into triangles. I need two of them. One of them I saturate up about halfway. This one I get the very, very end wet just the very end wet. It stays up here. I get a scoring tool. It's got little wires that stick out. Scratch the clay really good. I get a short brindle, short bristle brush that is uh, fairly stiff. This one's nasty, but it's stiff. And then I just have a little container of just plain water. I don't use anything special. So I get my I'll do this for your enjoyment here. I set it down. I take my saturated one. I wipe it at the top, wipe it at the bottom. This one's already scored. I score it about a little, little over half an inch down. Straight below that, I do it a little bit at the bottom. And then I grab my first one here. I take the very end. This is the piece will be the top. This is the piece that faces out. This is the piece that faces your up and I take this little spot right here and I put it down about an inch like that then I push completely push the bottom half inch of that into the pottery my cups just right it's not changing the shape of my cup at all if this bottom's still wet I put my thumb right here I let this come down And then I push the bottom on. I just push it on enough that it sticks. It holds itself. Then I can pick the cup up and work. I like the cup to be, I like this to be about a finger width above the bottom. And then I fan it out this way, straight down here, fan it out over here. So it's completely blended in. Now it's got a pretty ugly shape of the handle here. 
take the handle, I tap it to the shape I want. I like the top a little bit sharper and it gets a little bit wider and then comes back in. Then you'll notice this area is not correct. So I will wet my whole end of my whole finger, support it on the inside and correct that shape right there so it's a nice smooth curl to the inside. This adheres this little part right here back to the mug, that little area right there. Because as the handle contracts different from the mug, you'll get a funky shape. That's about the finished handle shape I want. Then I look at the handle straight on like this to see if it's straight. And straight on from the top to be sure it comes off at a 90 degree angle. That's pretty close there. Boom, boom. And I can squeeze this mug out of shape right now. Doesn't matter. I'm going to fix it here in a minute. So, main thing is everything's on there straight. Okay, that's all good. Then I get my sponge that has very, very little water. If you get up close, you can see the finger marks all in that. And there's some goopy stuff up in there. Just a few swipes of this is way faster than your fingers can do. And you'll notice these stress cracks here in the top where I folded my handle over. A few wipes with this. And it blends it back together enough that you won't see it when it fires. Then the, the last thing I do is all of my handles, the handle is below the rim so I can turn it upside down and I push the bottom in very, very little. So this has a little bit of a dip shape. That way when it dries, it won't go weeble wobble, weeble wobble. But that's my finished handle. It's enough for easily for a man to have three fingers in. I check the roundness of the piece from the top. And then I let it, the initial dry to go back on the wearboard just like this. Because if you've got too much water in the clay and you put it on the wearboard like this and it does draw up any, inevitably you'll have a spot here that'll grab, a spot over here grab, and it's driven driving ground it will dry oblong and then when you come to find out it's too dry to change the shape so I let the pots dry mostly like this till it's well past leather hard then flip them to let this edge dry that's ready for my uh, trimming any of the uh, ugliness you see on the side like these little things here you can just flick them off when it's dry don't mess with them now that's it only 48 more to go and as I like to do here's a few just normal speed no talking I'll at least turn it where you can see what take I'm doing the wet one slap it on inch below the rim just enough to hold it
Another thing is if you've got a boo-boo on your side of your cup, find it before you put your handle on. Maybe you can cover something up. Potters can hide a lot of mistakes. Nobody will ever know.